this is one of those subjects that gets people super fired up. Everybody's got an opinion. This should be fun. This is a big one with the folks that love the whiskey. This subject is as highly debated as things like whether you should pineapple on pizza, PC versus Mac, what's better, cats or dogs, whether the toilet paper goes flipped over the roll or hanging under the roll. Lots of folks have lots of very strong opinions about this subject and they all think they're right. <laughs> I'm gonna try to remain as neutral as possible while we're talking about this. Consider me Switzerland. Today, we are gonna tackle what is the right way to drink whiskey. Do you drink it neat? Do you add water? Do you add ice? Coke? All those things. The answer to that is quite simple. Enjoy whiskey as you choose. If you like to drink it straight, drink it straight. If you like it with ice or soda or Coca-Cola or whatever you like, drink it like that. However, for appreciation, which is slightly different from pure enjoyment, there are three basic, very simple rules. That fellow there is Mr. Charlie or Charles McLean. And if you don't know who he is, definitely look him up on YouTube, look him up on Google. He is one of the big dogs in Scotch whiskey. If he is talking about whiskey, you should listen because that man knows his shit. He makes a couple really good points for us to jump off on, on this subject. One, the right way to drink whiskey is the way that you enjoy it, whatever that is. Whether it's Coke, water, ice, in a Glencairn, in a frickin' red Solo cup, it doesn't matter. If that's the way you enjoy it, don't let anyone tell you different. That is the right way to drink it. Secondly, he points out the difference between drinking for strictly enjoyment or drinking for appreciation or to experience the whiskey. And that's an important distinction to make because while you're drinking for enjoyment, drink it however you like. Doesn't really matter if that's the way you enjoy it, it's right. However, if you're drinking it to really explore the whiskey, to really appreciate the whiskey as the distiller intended, there are a couple guidelines that you should at least consider before dumping a bunch of ice or Coke or whatever into your whiskey. There's lots of different whiskey glasses, but the main two categories you're gonna see are your tasting type glasses, which are these glasses up here. Their whole design is based around trying to accentuate the whiskey experience. This is an official Glencairn, by the way, one of the probably most popular tasting glasses. Uh, this is mine with my logo on the website. <clears throat> Just saying, shameless plug. This is a Bourbon Trail tasting glass, and then this is a Scotch tasting glass sent to me by the good folks at Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. The big thing you almost all we see is a bulb, a bulbous kind of round bottom going up to kind of a narrowed nose, tulip shape as they call it. Allows you to give the whiskey a good swirl and then it's gonna gather the vapors and the aromas from that whiskey and then funnel it up to your nose. Really helps you pull out small nuances in the nose of the whiskey where in the second type of glass we're gonna talk about here in a second, it's a little more difficult to do it. Neat, maybe a little water, not the best things for adding ice. They're not very big. As you can see, the mouth is tiny. Getting ice cubes in that is gonna be a disaster. So these are really your tasting whiskey glasses. The second category is your tumblers. Now these are your more universal kind of Swiss army knife of whiskey drinking. These are general purpose whiskey drinking glasses. You can drink neat in these, you can drink with a little bit of water, you can add on the rocks, you can add ice to these, you can even drink cocktails in these glasses. They've got bigger mouths, they're a little larger, they accommodate just about anything you can throw at it when it comes to whiskey. Uh, this one is a handmade one from my buddy Pete, Pete's Pirate Life, really nice tumbler. This is another shameless plug <laughs> on the website. This is one that I had designed, uh, another handmade glass, and I incorporated a little bit of a tulip shape in this particular one to try to help with the swirl and maintaining a little bit more nose than most tumblers do. And then this is just kind of a, you know, factory cheap standard tumbler. This is what I drink out the majority of the time. I actually enjoy enjoy drinking out of these way more. I like the feel of them in my hand. That's what she said. <clears throat> I've said before, I don't love the little pinky out kind of situation. Some people do. Uh, I don't hate it. I drink out of Glencairn's quite a bit, but I prefer the feel of a tumbler. Again, as you can see, just like with the tasting glasses, the tumblers are gonna come in lots of different shapes and sizes. 
That being said, for enjoyment, you can drink out of whatever you want. You can drink out of the damn bottle, a solo cup, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But in general, these are your two kind of main categories, your two gold standards of whiskey glasses. Regardless of what glass you decide is your favorite and what glass you're gonna be drinking out of, I always recommend the first time you try a new whiskey, whether that be a new bottle you've been hunting or a friend of yours is sharing a pour of his favorite whiskey with you, before you go changing the whiskey by adding water or adding ice or adding cola or whatever your favorite way to drink whiskey is, at least give it a try neat. Let me see if I can explain it in another terms to maybe help you explain my thinking on this. Say you go to a nice restaurant, a really nice steakhouse, and you order a nice, big, thick, juicy bone-in ribeye. When that delicious, juicy steak shows up on your plate, are you gonna immediately start putting salt and pepper on it, or God forbid, slathering it with a bunch of steak sauce? I hope not. I really, truly hope not. I hope you would give that thing a taste first to see if it needs anything before you go changing the flavors. Well, whiskey, kind of the same way, right? Try it neat first. And that is actually a fantastic segue for us to take a small break and thank the sponsor of today's video, Porter Road. I've said it many, many times. There is no better glass of whiskey than after a nice, ribeye steak dinner. You get you a nice bone-in ribeye, maybe a nice loaded baked potato. After that, you go pour you a nice little cup of whiskey, get you a cigar. Whew. If smoking a cigar and drinking some whiskey after a nice steak dinner is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> Porter Road is an online butcher shop that delivers high quality meat directly to your door. They offer a wide variety of dry aged beef, pork, chicken, and lamb, including rare butcher cuts. And I will say, that is one of the things I really dig about them. They have everything. I've found some online places that have stuff, but these guys have it all. I mean, they have canoe cut marrow bones. They have pork shoulders. They have cuts of steak I've never even heard of. They've got brisket, packer briskets, pork butts, ribs, dino ribs. So all those cuts that I have a really hard time finding locally for smoking and stuff like that they've got it all. They work with trusted local farmers who raise animals the right way, humanely on pasture with no added hormones or antibiotics. They dry age their beef for 14 days and hand cut each steak and chop to produce cuts that you won't find in your grocery store. So the thing about their dry aging that I really like is I've had some dry aged steaks that get a little funky. If you dry them for a long time, they get a funk that I'm not a big fan of. Well, these guys dry aged them for 14 days, which supposedly is just the right amount to where you condense that beef flavor and you get the benefit of a little added tenderness, but without going to the whole like funky cheese, weird dry aged stuff, which I'm not into. These things are delicious. You can also shop like you want at any local butcher shop by ordering items a la carte. They also offer subscriptions, steaks and chops arrive fresh and never frozen. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, check the links I'm gonna put below. The kind folks at Porter Road have given us a 15% off discount on your first order. All orders over $100 ship free. Thanks again to the good folks at Porter Road for sponsoring the video and supporting the channel. All right, so as much as I love steak, let's get back to the whiskey. We've established much like a good steak, whiskey, it's never a bad idea to try it and eat first. That being said, even the most snobby of whiskey snobs I don't think would ever wrinkle their forehead over someone putting some water in their whiskey. It can kind of open the nose of the whiskey up. It can open the flavors of the whiskey up. It can bring that proof down just a little bit to take some of that burn out so that your taste buds can better kind of evaluate the flavors in the whiskey. Sometimes if whiskey's hot, especially like barrel proof stuff, the burn can be so intense, it can kind of overwhelm your taste buds, especially for people new to drinking whiskey. Anything 80 proof or above really, which 80 proof is pretty low, can be a little overwhelming. Now some rules of thumb when adding water, I will say not all whiskey is better with water. I actually prefer most whiskeys neat. Sometimes adding too much water, it can go flat, or sometimes it can make the flavors that you really don't like more prominent, and then it can kind of bury the flavors that you enjoy. So my suggestion is always, like I said, start neat, and then add very small amounts of water. I usually have a little water jug. Um, you could use a little 
pipette, I think these things are called, or a, a eyedropper. Uh, if you don't have something like that, a straw also works really well. Just stick a straw down in the water, put your finger on the end, and then you know let it go to put small amounts in. Because when you first put the water in there, it's actually gonna separate the oils, and it can actually be a little stronger for a second. So not a bad idea to put the water in there, give it a little swirl, let it rest for a minute or two, and let that water integrate. Add small amounts at a time and taste it every time you add water until you get to that perfect point that you really, really enjoy. Also, the kind of water you use does matter. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say you gotta go all bouge and get some of the limestone filtered water from the stream behind the distillery or anything like that. But I know like here where I live, our water has a bad flavor. It's very chlorine-y, has an off flavor. And if I put that water in my whiskey, obviously that flavor is gonna carry over and change the whiskey. So my recommendation is at least use like a bottled water or a bottled filter water, something like that, unless you happen to live in a really lucky area where your tap water's delicious and then, you know, hey, go at it. I feel like this is probably of all the stuff we've touched on today, the one that people are most opinionated about. People seem to have real strong opinions about frozen water for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about what ice actually does to your drink. One, it's gonna dilute it pretty quick. And two, it's gonna make it cold, obviously. Ice, after all. Human taste buds are not great at picking up or interpreting flavors at extreme temperatures. When something's really cold or really hot, you're not gonna pick up on the subtle nuances as well as if it's closer to room temperature. Perfect example, Diet Coke. If you have a big cup full of ice and you pour some Diet Coke in there and you drink it ice cold, it's not so bad, it's okay. That Diet Coke is like room temperature, it tastes like the devil's ass crack. That stuff is hot garbage. And that is because our taste buds are not picking up on all that ass <laughs> at the lower temperatures. So point is, you're not gonna taste as much of the whiskey when it's on ice. The nose is also not gonna be as strong when it's on the rocks. Cold temperatures kind of also suppress and close down the nose a little bit the same way it does the flavor. So as long as you're good with it, you know, tuning down the flavor a little bit, turning down the nose a little bit, uh, watering your drink down, if that's the way you want it, on the rocks it is. For, for new people to whiskey, much like adding water, it's actually a good way to get them into whiskey because kind of toning it down a little bit for those people are actually a good way to introduce them sometimes. Much like we talked about with the water, if you make your ice out of garbage water, that flavor is gonna end up in your whiskey. I make my ice out of filtered water or bottled water. Also, you drink with your eyes first. I know that sounds weird. Another reason why I like this super clear ice. I mean, look how sexy that shit is. Now that is some clear ice right there, my friends. You can put them in an ice press and you can make these really sweet ice balls. I mean, those things look good in a beverage. Now, the fact that they're clear doesn't really make them taste any better, but it does make it look better and things that look better psychologically, you automatically like better. So there's that. The big ice though, I will say, there is a little bit of science behind that, I would argue. Lots of small ice cubes, there's gonna be lots of surface area there and they're gonna melt quicker and dilute your drink quicker. A huge single ice cube like this, less surface area is gonna mean it melts a little slower, so therefore your drink is gonna dilute a little slower. So. I do like using the big ice cubes rather than a bunch of small ones. If you wanna do the clear ones like that, I do have a video I did back a while ago. I'll post the link up here somewhere uh, to that. It's really, really damn simple to get that super crystal clear, sexy ice. Cause I mean, damn, look at that. That is some good looking ice. I tend to think bourbon holds up better. The strong flavors of bourbon tend to hold up a little better to being put on the rocks. I know I've had some Scotch snobs tell me. And that's because bourbon piss and it has to be watered down to be top. That's just people being jerks. I know lots of people that love Irish and Scotch on the rock. So it's whichever one you like. Generally speaking, your higher proof stuff is going to sustain the dilution a little better where something at 80 proof really quickly, that stuff's gonna get watered down and taste like nothing. But hey, maybe that's the way you like it. So to sum this video up, what is the right way to drink whiskey? however in the hell you want. Again, there are some guidelines that are probably gonna make your experience a little more enjoyable if you're truly tasting a whiskey to experience it and pull out all the nuances. But at the end of the day, if you wanna put that shit in a red Solo cup with one part whiskey, one part grape soda, and a bunch of ice, hey man, if that's your jam, go for it.
All right, folks. Well, hopefully you found this video informational and maybe even a little entertaining. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video. New whiskey glasses on the site should already be up depending on when I post this video. I believe they're already out. Good Christmas present. Damn good whiskey glass. It's a damn sexy whiskey glass if I don't say so myself. What is the right way to drink whiskey? In one of my whiskey glasses. <laughs> shameless plug, shameless.